book 9 last of all comes the tyrannical man about whom we have once more to ask how is he formed out of the democratical and how does he live in happiness or in misery yes he said he is the only one remaining there is however i said a previous question which remains unanswered what question I do not think that we have adequately determined the NATO and the number a number of the appetites and until this is accomplished and inqu the inquiry will always be confused. Well he said it is not too late to su to supply the omission. Very true I said and also the point which I want to understand certain to the of the unnecessary pleasures and appetites I conceive to be unlawful, everyone appears to have him with them, but in some persons they are controlled by the laws and by person, and, by, and the better decides we fell over them, either they are wholly banished or they become few and weak, while in the case of others they are stronger and there are more of them. Which appetites do you mean? I mean those which are awake when the when the reasoning and human ruling power in us is asleep, then the will be within us. Gods with meat and or drink starts up and having sacred of sleep, God's for to satisfy his desires, and there is no conceivable folly or crime not expecting in chess or any other unnatural union or parasite or parasite of the eating of forbidden food which at the such which at such a time when he has parted company with all shame and sense a man may not be ready to commit most true he said but when a man's pulse is healthy and temperate and when before going to sleep he has awakened his personal powers and fed them on noble thoughts and inquiries collecting himself in meditation after having first endured his appetites neither too much nor too little but just enough to lay them to sleep and prevent them and their enjoyments and pains for interfering with the higher principle which he lives in the solitude of pure abstraction free to contemplate and aspire to the knowledge of the unknown whether in past present or future when again he has a light the passionate element if he has a carol i guess anyone i say when after pacifying the three rational principles he goes up the truth which is reason before he takes his rest then as you know he attends truth more nearly and is and is least like to be the so the spot of fantastic and lawless visions i quite agree in saying this, I have been run into a decision, but the point which I desire to note is that in, that in all of us, even in good men, there is a lawless will best nature which peers out in sleep. Pray, consider whether I am right and you are with me. Yes, I agree, and now remember the character which we attribute to the democratic man. He was supposed from his youth of what to have been trained under miserly parent when Congress receiving appetites in him but his countenance, the unnecessary, which am only an amusement or an ornament. True, and then he go into the company of a more refined, licentious sort of people and take into all the wanton says rust into the opposite extreme for an abhorrence of his father's imminence, unless being, being the better man than his corruptors, he was drawn in both directions and he halted midway and led a life, not a full girl and slavish passion, but of what he deemed moderate indulgence in various pleasures. After this manner, the democrat was generated out of the oligarch. Yes, he said that was a view of him, and he so still. And now I said, 
years will be passed away, and you must conceive this man, such as he is, to have a son who is brought up in his father's principle. In his father's principles, I can imagine him. Then, you must further imagine the same thing to happen to the son, which has already happened to the father. He is thrown into a perfectly lawless life, which by his seducers is termed perfect liberty, and his father and friends take part with his moderate desires, and the opposite party assist the opposite ones. As soon as these tired magicians and tyrant makers find that they are losing their hold on him, they continue to implant in him a master patient to be lord over his idol and spend three a sort of monstrous wing gone, that is the only imagine which will adequately describe him. Yes, he said, that is the only adequate image of, thing, of him. And when his other lust amid clothes of incense and perfumes and garlands and wines, and all the pieces of dissolute life now let loose come buzzing around him, nourishing to the utmost the sting of desire which they implode in his strong like nature, that at last this lord of the soul, having madness from the captain of his guard, break out, breaks out into a frenzy, and, he, and if he finds in himself any good opinion or any good opinions or appetites in process of formation, and there is in him any sense of shame remaining, to these better principles, he puts an end, and casts them forth until he has purged away temperance and brought in madness to the full. As he said, that is the way in which the tyrannical man is generated, and is not this, and is not this the person why of all love has been called a tyrant? I should not wonder, Father, I said, as a drunken man, also the spirit of a tyrant, he has. And you know that a man who is deranged and not right in his mind will fancy that he is able to rule not only over men but also over the gods that he will. And the tyrannical man in the true sense of the word comes into being when, either under the influence of another or habit or what he becomes drunken, lustful or passionate. Oh my friend, is not that so? Absolutely. Such the man and such is his origin. And next, how he does, how does he live? Suppose, as people fatuously say, you were to tell me. I imagine I said the next step is in his progress. That there will be face and cargo cells and grave feelings and courtesans and all that sort of things, of thing. Love is the, love is the lot of house within him and all, this, all the conscience of his soul that is certain. Yes, and every day and every night desires go up, many and formidable, and their demands and are many. They are indeed, he said. His revenues is his revenues, if he has many, are soon spent. Two, then comes death and the cutting down of his property, of course. When he has nothing left, must not his desires, crowding in the nest, like young weapons, by crying aloud for food, and he got it on by them, and especially by and especially by love himself, who is in a manner the captain of them, is in a frenzy and would fain discover whom he can defraud of the or, or the spoil of his property, in order that he may gravity gratify them. Yes, that's so sure to be the case. He must have money, no matter how if he is to escape horrid pains and pangs. He must, and as in himself there was a succession of precepts, and the new got the better of the old and took away the rights, so he being younger will claim to have more than his father and his mother, and he has spent his own share of the property, will take a slice of theirs, no doubt he will. And if his parents will not give away, will not give way, then he will try, try he will try first of all to cheat and deceive them very little. And 
If he fails, then he will use force and plunder them. Yes, probably. And if the old man and woman fight for their own, what then, my friend? Will the creator feel or any compunction at tyrannizing of them? Now he said, I should not feel at any comfortable about his parents. But, oh heavens, Adimantus, on account of some wrinkled love of a harlot, who is anything but a necessary connection, can you believe that he would think, he would strike the mother who is, he, who is his ancient friend? And necessary to his very existence, and would place her under, and would place her under the authority of the order, when she is brought under the same roof with her, or that under like circumstances, he would do the same to these. To, he would do the same to his waited of father, first and most indispensable of friends, for the self some newly found, blooming youth, who is the reverse of the. Or indispensable. Yes, indeed, he said. I believe that he that he would. I said a tyrannical sword is a blessing to his father and mother. Yes, indeed, he replied. He first takes their property, and when the tales and pleasures are beginning to swarm in the hive of his soul, then he puts it to house or stares the garments of some native wayfarer. Next, he proceeds to clear a temple. Meanwhile, the old opinions which he had when a child, and which gave judgment about good and evil, and are overthrown by those orders which have just been emancipated, and are now the bodyguard of love and serve his empire. This, in his democratic days, when he was still subject to the laws to end to his father were only let loose in the dreams of sleep, but now that he is under the dominion of love, he becomes always an invoking and waking reality what he was then every very rarely, and in a dream only, he will commit the foolish murder, or eat forbidden food, or be guilty of any other horrid act. Love is his tyrant, and lives only and lives lovely in him, and lawlessly, and being himself a king, leads him on as a tyrant leads a state to the performance of any reckless deed by which he can maintain himself and the rebel of his associates, whether those whom will echo, whether those whom ever communications have got in front, in front without, or those whom he himself has allowed to break loose within him by reason of a similar even to in himself. Have we, not, have we not here a picture of his way of life? Yes, indeed, he said. And if there are only a few of them in the state, and the rest of the people are well disposed, they go away and become the bodyguard of mercenary soldiers or some other tyrant who may probably want them for a while. And if there is no work, they stay at home and do many little pieces of mischief in the city. But so of mischief, for example, they are the thieves, burglars, cutbushes, footpads, robbers of tempers, men stealers of the community, community, or if they are able to speak, they to speak, they turn informers and bear false witness and take bribes. A small catalog of evils, even if the perpetrators of them are few number. Yes, I said, but small and good are comparative terms, and all these things. In the misery and effort which they inflict upon the state, do not come within a thousand miles of the tyrant. When this noxious class and their followers grow numbers and become conscious of the of the state, assisted by the infatuation of the people, they choose from among themselves the one who has most of the tyrant in his own soul, and him they create his the tyrant. Yes, he said, and he will be the most fit to be a tyrant. If the people yield well and good, but if they resist him, as he begins by beating his own father, mother, son of his, the power beats them and will keep his, his dear old father like mother learn. As the Cretan see, in subjection to his young returns whom he has introduced to be their rulers and masters, this is the end of his patience and desires. Exactly. When such men are only private 
are only private individuals and become the and become the get power. This is the character they associate entirely with their own partners or ready tools or if they want anything for any from anybody, the in the third are equally ready to be to bow down if for them the profess episode of affection for them, but when they have gained they have gained their point they know them no more. Yes truly. They are always either the master of servants and never the friends of anybody. The terror never tastes of true freedom of friendship, certainly not. And may we not rightly call such men a treacherous no occasion. Also, they are utterly unjust. If we were right in our nation of justice, yes, he said, we were perfectly right. Let us then sum up in a word, I said, the character of the worst man. He is the waking reality of what we dream most of. And this is he who being by nature was of tyrant was of a tyrant bit bit bears rule and the longer and the longer he lives the more of tyrant of a tyrant he becomes. This is this is certain said Glocon, taking his turn to answer. And will not he who has been sound to be the weak the wickedest to the weakest be also the most miserable and he who has tyrannized longest and worst? Most continually and truly miserable. Although this may not be the opinion of men in general, yes, it is inevitably. And must not the tyrannical men be like the tyrannical state, and the democratical men like the democratical state, and the same of the others, certainly. And a state in, uh, and a state is to the state, and a state is to state in future and happiness. So is men in relation to men, to be sure. Then, comparing our original city, which was under a king, and the city which is under a tyrant, how do they stand? As to as to future, they are the opposite extremes. He said, for one is the very best, and the other is very is the very worst. There can there can be no mistake. I said as to which is which, and therefore I will at once inquire whether you arrive at a similar decision about their relative happiness and misery. And here we must not allow ourselves to be panic-stricken at the apparition of the tyrant, who is only unit and may perhaps have a few returners about him, but let us go as we out to as we out into every corner of the city and look all about and then we will give our opinion. A fair invitation. He replied, and I see as very one as ev as everyone must that a tyrant is the weakest for weakest form of government, and the ruler and the rule of a king the happiness the uh, and the rule of a king the happiest, and is estimating the man to may I not fairly make a, a like request that I should have a judge whose mind can enter into and see to human nature, he must not li be like a child who looks at the outside and is dazzled at the pompous aspect which is which the technical nature assumes to the beholder, but let him be one who has a clear insight. May I suppose that in the, the may I suppose that the judgment is given in the hearing of us by of us all by one who is able to judge and has dwelt in the same place with him and been present at his daily life and known him in his family relations where he may be seen stripped of, of his tragedy attire and again in the, how, in the hour of public danger he shall tell us about the happiest and misery of the tyrant when compared with the with other men that again what he said is very is a very brave proposal. So assume that we ourselves are able and experienced judges, and have before now meet, before now met with a, with such a person, we shall then, we shall then have someone who will answer our inquiries by all means. Let me ask you how to not to forget the power of the individual and the state, bearing this, bearing this in mind, in glancing in turn from from one to other of them will you tell me the respective conditions what do you mean he asked beginning with the state i replied will you say that the city which is governed by a tyrant is free of unstable 
OCT set can be more completely and stiff. And yet, as you see, there are three men as well as mustaches in such a state. Yes, he, sa yes, he said, I see that there are few where the people speak generally, and be the be and the best, and the best of them are miserable, degraded, and enslaved. Then, if the man like if the man is like the state, I said, must not the same rule prevail? He so is full of meanness and vulgarity. The best elements in him are enslaved, and there is a small ruling part, which is also the worst and murders inevitably. And would you say that the soul of such an, an one is the soul of a free man or of the slave? Is the soul of a slave, in my opinion, and the state which enslaved under a tyrant is a tyrant incapable of acting voluntarily, a tyrant incapable, and also the soul which is under a tyrant. I am speaking of the soul taken as a, as a whole, is less capable of doing what he de what she desires. There is a girlfly which goads her, and she is full of trouble and remorse. Certainly, and is the city which under tyrant of rich or poor, poor, and the technical soul must be always poor or an insatiable too, and must not and must not such a state and such a man be always full of fear. Yes, indeed, is there any state in which you will find more of lamentation, sorrow, and groaning in pain? Certainly not. In, and is there any man in whom you will find more of this sort of misery than in tyrannical man who is, an, who is in the fury of, of patience and desires? Impossible. Reflecting upon this and similar evils, you had a tyrannical state to be the most miserable of states. And I was right, he said. Certainly. I said, and when you see the same efforts in the technical man, what do you say of him? I say that he is by far the most miserable of all men. There I said, I think that you are beginning to go wrong. What do you mean? I do not think that he has a yet he has as yet reached the utmost extent of misery. Then how is more miserable one of whom I am about to speak? How who is that? He who is of a tyrannical nature and instead of leading a private life has been caused with the further misfortune of being a public tyrant. From what has been said, I gather that you are right. Yes, I replied, but in this high argument, you should be a little more certain and should not conjecture only for of all occasions, disrespecting good and evil is the greatest. Very too, he said, let me then offer you an illustration which may, I think, throw a light upon this subject. What is your illustration? The case of rich of indi the case of rich individuals in cities who possess many slaves. From them you may form an idea of tyrants' conditions, for they both have slaves. The only difference is that he has more slaves. Yes, that is the differ that's the difference. You know that they live securely and have nothing to apprehend from their servants, what should they fear? Nothing. But do you observe the reasons of this? The, yeah, this re the reason is that the, the whole city is weak together for the, for the protection of each individual. Very true, I said, but imagine one of these orders, the master says, the master say of some fifty slaves, together with his family and poverty and slaves, carried off by a guard into the wilderness, where there are no free men to help him, will be will he not be in any in an agony of fearless and of fearless he and his wife and children should be put to death by his slaves? Yes, he said, he will be in the utmost fear. The time has arrived when he will be compelled to flatter the defects of his slaves and make many promises to them of freedom and other things. Much against his will, he will have to cajole his own servants. Yes, he said, that will be the only way of serving himself. And suppose the same good who carried, he, who carried him away to surround him with neighbors who will not suffer one man to be the master of another and who, if they could catch the offender, will take his life. His case, his case will be still worse if suppose him to be everywhere surrounded and watched by enemies. And is not this the sort of reason in which the tyrant will be bound? He, who being by nature such, a, such as we have described, is full of all sorts of fears and lusts. 
He saw his dainty and greedy, and yet alone of all men is in the city. He is therefore allowed to go on a journey or to see the things which other women desire to first to see. He but he lives in his soul in his in his soul like a woman hidden in the house and is jealous of any other citizen who's who goes into foreign parts and sees anything of interest. Very true, he said. And amid evil such as this, will not he who is ill governed in his own person, the tyrannical man, I mean, whom you just now decided to be the most miserable of all, will not he be yet more miserable when, instead of leading a private life, is constrained by fortune to be a public tyrant? He has to be master of others when he is not master of himself. He is like disease of of paralytic men who is compelled to pass his life not in not in retirement but fighting and combating with other men. As he said, the similitude is most exact. Is not his case utterly miserable and does not the two tyrant lead a worse life than he whose life you whose life you determine to be to be the worst? Certainly, he who is the real tyrant. Whatever man may think is the real slave and is obliged to practice the greatest adulation and servility and to be the flat and to be the flatterer of the villas of mankind. Yes, desires which he which he is utterly unable to satisfy and has more wants than any work and is truly poor if you know if you know how to inspect the whole soul of him all his life long. Is he is beset with fear and is full of cons- confusions and distractions, even as the state which is he resembles, and surely the resemblance holds very true. He said, Moreover, as we were saying before, he goes worse from having power, he becomes and is of necessity more jealous, more faithless, more unjust, more friendless, more impious than he was at first. He is the purveyor and cherishes, cherisher of every sort of vice, and the consequence is that he is supremely miserable and that he makes everybody else as miserable as himself. No man of any sense will dispute your words. Come then, I said, and as the general umpire is theatrical contents, proclaims the result, they also decide who, in your opinion, is first in the scale of happiness and who second and in what order the orders follow there are five of them in all they are the royal democratical oligarchical oligarchical democratical tyrannical the decision will be easily given he replied they shall be courses coming on the stage and i must judge them in the order in which they enter by, by the criterion of future and price happiness and misery. Now need we hire a herald or shall I announce that the son of Ariston the best has decided that the best and justice is also the happiest and that this is he who is the most royal man and king over himself and that the worst and more unjust man is also the most miserable and that this is he who, belong, who being the greatest tyrant of himself is also the greatest tyrant of his state Make the proclamation yourself, he said, and sully that whether sin one sin by gods and men, let the words be added. Then this I said will be our first proof, and there is another which may also have some weight. What is that? The second proof is the view from the nature of the soul, seeing that the individual soul, like the state, has been divided by us into three principles, the division may, the division may I think, furnish a new demonstration of what NATO, it seems to me that to these three principles, the pieces correspond also to the size and governing powers. Do you, how do you mean, he said, there is one principle with which, as we were saying, a man learns another with which he is angry, the third having many forms, has no special name, but is denoted by the general term appetit- appetitive from the extraordinary strength and vehemence of the desires and eating and drinking and the other sensual appetites which are the main elements of it 
also money loving because such desires are generally satisfied by the help of money. That is true, he said. If we were to say that the loves and pleasures of this third part we were concerned with gain, we should then be able to fall back on a single notion and make a mic to and intelligibly describe this part of the soul as loving gain or money. I agree with you. Again, it's not a passionate element wholly set on ruling and conquering and getting fame through. Suppose we call it contentious or ambitious, would be would a term be suitable as term be suitable. On the other hand, everyone sees that the principle of knowledge is wholly direct, directed to the truth and care and cares less than either of the orders of organ of fame, far less, far less. Love of, of wisdom, love of knowledge, a titles which we may fitly apply to that part of the soul. Certainly, one principle prevails in the souls of one class of men, another in others, another in others, as may happen, yes. Then we may begin by assuming that there are three classes of men lovers of wisdom, lovers of other lovers of gain, exactly. And there are three kinds of pleasure which are their several objects. Very true. Now, if you examine the three classes of men, and acts of them in turn with which of their leaves is present as each will be found placing its own and depreciating that of others the money maker will contrast the vanity of honor or of learning if they bring no money with the sole advantages of gold and silver to his seat and the lover of honor what will be what will be his opinion will he not think that the piece of riches in vulgar is vulgar, when the piece of learning, if it brings no dis- no distinction, is all smoke and nonsense to him, very true. And are we to suppose, I said, that the philosopher sets any value on other pleasures in comparison with the piece of knowing the truth and did the person abiding, if ever learning not so far indeed, from the heaven of pleasure, does he not call the other pleasures necessary under the idea that if there were no necessity for them, he would rather not have them? There can be no doubt of that, he replied. Since then the pleasures of each class and life of each are in dispute, and the case is not which, is not which life is more or less honorable, or better or worse, but which is the more pleasant of painless household we know we speak so truly i cannot myself tell he said but well but what ought to be the criterion of any better than experience and wisdom and reason there cannot be a better he said then i said reflect one of the three individuals which has the greatest experience of all the pieces which we enumerated as the love of gain in learning the nature of essential truth, great experience of the peace of knowledge, of knowledge than the philosopher, as of the peace of gain. The philosopher he gained, he replied, has greatly the advantage, for he has of necessity always known the taste of the older pieces of from childhood upwards, but the love of gain in all experience. In all his experience has not necessity to test it. Or I should rather say, even had he decided, how could hardly have test have tested the sweetness of learning and knowing truth. Then the love of wisdom has a great advantage over the love of, of gain, for he has double experience, he has very great. Again, has he greater experience the, of the peace of honor? Or the love of honor of the peace of the peace of wisdom. Nay, he said, all three are honored in proportion as, as they attain their object. For the rich men and the wealth men and the wise men alike have the cut of admirers, admirers, and all and us. They all receive honor. They all experience. They all have experience of the pleasures of honor. But the delight which is to be found in the knowledge of true being is known to be the to be to the philosopher only. His experience then 
will enable him to judge better than anyone far better and he is the only one who has wisdom as well as experience certainly further the very faculty which is the instrument of judgment is not possessed by the covetous or ambitious man but only by the philosopher what faculty reason with whom as we were saying the decision are to the out to rest yes and reason is peculiarly instrument certainly if wealth and gain were the criterion then the price of blame of the lover of gain would surely be the most trust, trustworthy and surely of honor of victory or courage that in that case the judgment of, of the ambitious of pernicious would be the truest clearly but since experience and wisdom and reason are the judges the only inference possible he replied is the pieces which are approved by the lover of wisdom and reason are the truest and so we arrive at the result that the place of the intelligent part of the soul is the pleasantest of the three and that he of us in whom this is the ruling principle has the pleasantest of life and casinably he said the wise man speaks with authority when he approves of his own life and what does the judge affirm to be the life which is next and the peace which is next clearly that the soldier and lover of honor who is nearer to himself than the money maker last comes the lover of gain very to he said to us in succession then as the judgment of a throne has the judgment of a throne the unjust in this flick in this conflict and now comes the third trial which dedicated to olympian zeus the savior a such whispers in my ear that no place i serve that of the wise is quiet and pure all others as a shadow only and surely this will prove the greatest the greatest most decisive of wills yes the greatest but will you explain yourself i will work you i will work out the subject and you shall answer my questions proceed say that is not please opposed to pain true and there is a natural state which is neither pleasure nor pain there is a state which is intermediate and a sort of repose of the soul about either that is what you mean yes you remember what people say when they are sick what do they say that after all nothing is pleasanter than health but then they never knew his this to be the greatest of pleasures until they were ill yes i know he said and when person are suffering for acute pain for acute pain you must have heard you must have heard them say that there is nothing pleasanter than to get rid of their of their pain i have and there are many other cases of suffering in which the mere rest and cessation of pain and not any positive enjoyment is installed by them as the greatest pleasure yes he said at the time they are pleased and well content to be at rest again what pleasure teaches teach, that sort of rest or cessation will be painful doubtless he said then the intermediate state of rest will be pleasure and will also be pain so it would seem but can that which is neither be comfort i should not say not and both peace and pain are motions of the soul are they not yes but that which but that which is neither was just now so to be rest and not motion and in a mean between them yes how then can we be right in supposing that the absence of pain is pleasure or that the absence of pleasure is pain impossible this then is an this then is an appearance only and not a reality ready to stay the ray, the rest is a pleasure at the moment and it and in comparison what and of what is painful and painful in comparison of what is pleasant but all these representations when tried by the test of true pleasure are not real but of a, but a sort of imposition that is the inference look at the other class of pleasures which have no antecedent pains and you will no longer suppose as you perhaps as you perhaps made a present the pleasure is only the cessation of pain of or pain of pleasure what are they he said where shall i find them 
that as many of them take an is take as an example the pleasures of smell, which are very great, and have no antecedent pains. They come in mom in a moment when the depart leave no pain behind them. Most we said, let us not then be induced to believe that you pleaser is the cessation of pain or pain of pleaser of pain of pleasure. No, still the monomerous and violent pleasures which reach the soul to the body are generally of this sort. They are reliefs of pain, that is true, and the anticipations of future pleasures and pains are of a like nature, yes. Shall I give you an illustration of them? Let me hear. You would allow, I said, that there is in nature an upper and lower and middle and middle region, I should, and if a person were to go from the lower to the middle region, would he not imagine that he is going up, and he will stand in the middle and see whence he has come, would imagine that he is already in the upper region, if he has never seen the two upper world, to be sure, he said, how can he think otherwise, but if he were taken back again, he would imagine, and truly imagine that he was descending, no doubt all that would arise out of his ignorance of the two upper and middle and lower regions. Yes, there can you then can you wonder that persons who are inexperienced in the truth as they having wrong ideas about many other things should also have wrong ideas about peace and pain and the intermediate state, so that when they are only being drawn towards the painful they feel and uh, they feel pain and think the pain which they experience to be real and in like manner when drawn away from pain to the nature of uh, or intermediate state they firmly believe that they have reached the goal of satiety and peace uh, they not knowing peace uh, and in contrasting pain with the absence of pain which like contrasting black with grey instead of white can you wonder, I say, it, I say it at this? No, indeed, I should be much more disposed to wonder the opposite. Look at the matter thus hunger, thirst, and the light and inanations of the bodily state, yes, and ignorance and, fo and folly are inanations of the soul, too, and food and wisdom are the corresponding satisfactions of either, certainly, and is the satisfaction derived from that which has less or from that which has more extensive ex existence the two uh, clearly from that clearly from that which has more what class of things what classes of things have greater share of your existence in your judgment those or in, in your judgment those of which put and drink and condiments and all kinds of sustenance are examples of the class which contains two opinion and knowledge and mind and all the different kinds of future put the case in this way which has a more pure being that which is concerned with the invariable the immortal and the true it is of such a nature and is found in such natures or that which is concerned with and with and found in the variable mortal and is itself variable mortal for pure he replied is the being of that which is concerned with the invariable and thus the sense of the invariable partake of knowledge in the same degree as of a sense yes of knowledge in the same degree and of truth in the same degree yes and conversely that which has less of truth which also have less of a sense necessary that in general those kind of those kinds of things which are in the service of the body have less of truth and a sense than those which are in the service of the soul far less and has not the body itself less of truth and a sense than the soul yes what is filled with more uh, with more real existence and actually has a more real existence is more really filled than which is filled with less and with less with less real existence in as well and is less real of course and if there be a pleaser in being filled with that which is according to nature, that which is more really filled with more real being, with more really and truly enjoy to pleaser, 
Big asks that which participants in less real being will be realized will and solely satisfied and will participate in an illusory and less real pleasure and casinable. This then who know not wisdom and virtue and are always busy with gluttony and sensuality go down and up as far as the mean and in their region they move at random toward life but they never pass into the two upper world did they, they neither look nor do they ever find their way neither are they truly filled with two beings nor do they taste of pure and abiding pleasure like cattle with their eyes always looking down and their heads stooping to the earth that is to the dining table they fatten and feed and breathe and in their excessive love of joy of these delights they kick and butt at one another with horns and hoofs which are made of iron and they kill one another by reason of the insatiable mm. lust for they for they fill themselves with that which is not substantial and the part of themselves which they feel is also unsubstantial and incontinent verily socrates said glucon you describe the life of the many like an oracle their pieces are mixed with pains how can they be otherwise for they are mere shadows and pictures of the truth and are colored by contrast which exaggerates but like and seed and so they implant in the minds of fools insane desires of themselves and they are for about as the says that the greeks for about the shade of helen at troy and ignorance of the truth something of that sort must inevitably happen and must not the like happen with the spirited or passionate element of the soul will not the passionate man who carries his patient to action be in the like case whether he whether he is envious and ambitious or violent and contentious or angry and discontented if he be seeking to attain honor and victory and the satisfaction of his anger without reason or sense yes he said the same will happen with the spirited element also they then may then may we then may we not confidently assert that the lovers of man in honor when they seek their precepts under the guidance and in the company of reason and knowledge and pursue after and win the precepts which wisdom serves them will also have the truest precepts in the highest degree which attainable to them in as much as they follow the tu- as they follow truth and they will have the precepts which are natural to them if that which is best for each one is also most natural to him yes certainly the best is most natural and when the whole soul falls and when the whole soul follows the philosophical principle and there is no division the several parts are just and do each of them their own business and enjoy severally the best and truest places of which they are capable exactly but when either of the two other principles prevails, it fails, it fails in attaining its own pleasure and compels the rest to pursue after pleasure which is a shadow only and which is not their own true. And the greater the interval which separates them from philosophy and reason, the more strange and elusive will be the pleasure, yes, and is not the farthest from reason which is at greatest distance from law and order clearly and the lustful and tyrannical desires are as we saw at the greatest distance yes and the royal and order desires are near are nearest yes then the tyrant will live at the greatest distance from two and of natural peace and the king at least at least certainly but if so the tyrant will live most unpleasantly unpleasantly and the king most pleasantly Inevitably, will you know the peace of the interval which separates them? Will you tell me they, they appear to the pieces one genuine and two spurious? Now the transgression of the tyrant reaches a point beyond the spurious, he has run away from the region of law and reason, 
and taken up his abode with certain slave priests, which are his satellites, and the means of his inferiority can only be expressed in a video. How do you mean? I assume. I said that the tyrant is in the third place from the oligarch, the democrat was in the middle. Yes, if there is truth, if and if there is truth in what has preceded, he will be wedded into an image of pleasure which is thrice removed as to truth from the pleasure of the oligarch. He will, and the oligarch is third from the royal, since we count as one royal and aristocratical. Yes, he is third. Then the tyrant is removed from the from two pieces by the space of a number, which is the three times three, manifestly the shadow then of tyrannical pieces determined by the number of length will be plain feature. Certainly, and if you raise the power and make the plan solid, there is no difficulty in seeing how fast in the interval by which the tyrant is parted from the king. Yes, the mathematician will easily do the sum. Or if some person begins at order, at the other hand, at the other end, and measure the interval by which the king is parted from tyrant in truth or of pleasure, he will find him when the multiplication is completed, living seven hundred twenty-nine times more pleasantly, and the tyrant more painfully by this same interval. By this same interval, what a wonderful calculation! And how enormous is the play is the distance which separates the just from the unjust in regard to pleasure and pain. Yet a true calculation I said, and a number which nearly concerns human life, if human beings are concerned with days and nights and months and years, seven hundred twenty nine nearly equals nearly equals the number of days and nights in the year. Yes, he said, human life is certainly concerned with them. That if the good and just man be, be, be the superior pleaser to the evil and unjust, his superiority will be infinitely greater in propriety of life and beauty and virtue, in measurably greater. What I said, and now having arrived at this stage at, of the argument, we may refer to the words which brought us hither. Was not someone saying that injustice was again to the perfectly unjust who was reputed to be just? Yes, that was it. Now then, having determined the power and quality of justice and injustice, let us have a little confession within him. What shall we say to him? Let us make an image, an image of the soul, that he may have his own words presented before his eyes. Of what sort an ideal image of the soul, like the composite creations of ancient mythology, such as Chimera, Oskila or Kerberos, and there are many others in which two or more different natives are said to grow into one. There are said of have been such unions. Then do you know model the form of a multitude genus, many headed monster having a ring of heads of a manner of beast, tame and wild, tame and wild, which he is able to generate in a metamorphose at will. You suppose my fellow's powers in the artist, but as a language is more pliable than works of any similar substance. Let there be such model, such model, let there be such a model as you propose. Suppose now that you make a second form as of a lion and third of a man, and the second smaller than the first, and the third smaller than the second. That he said is, a, is an easier task, and I have met them as you see. And now, and now join them, and let the and let the three go, and the and let the three go into one. That has been accomplished. Next vision the side of them into a single image as of man, so that he, so that he who is not able to look within and sees only the other hall, may believe the beast to be a single human creator. I have done so, he said. And now to him who maintains that it is profitable for the human creator to be unjust and profitable to be just, let us reply that if he be right, it is profitable for this creature to face the multitudinous monster and strengthen the lion and the lion leg qualities, where to starve and weaken the man who is consequently liable to be dragged out, to be dragged 
about at the mercy at the mercy of either of the of the other two and he is not to attempt to familiarize and harmonize them with one another he ought rather to suffer them to find might and for one another certainly he said that is what the approver of injustice says to him the support of justice makes answer that he should never so speak and act as to give the man within him in some way or other the most complete mastery of the entire human creator he should watch over the many-headed monster like a god husbandman fostering and cultivating the gentle qualities and preventing the will what the white ones from growing he should be making the lion heart his ally and his car and in common care of them of them all soup uniting the several parts within an, one another and with himself yes he said there is quite what the man maintainer of justice say and so from every point of view whether of this uh, honor or of advantage the approval of justice is right and speaks the truth and the disapproval is wrong and false and ignorant yes from every point of view come now and let us gently reason with the unjust who is not intentionally in error sweet sir we will say to him what think you of things esteem noble and ignoble, ignoble is not the noble that which subjects the beast to the man or rather to the god in man and in the in the ignorable the noble that which subjects the man to the beast to the beast he can hardly avoid saying yes can he now he know he, yes can he now but if he has any regard for my opinion but if he agrees so far we may ask him to answer another question then how would a man profit if he received gold and silver on the condition that he was to enslave the noblest part of him to the world how can who can imagine that a man who sold his son or daughter to slavery for money especially if he, if he sold them into the hands of fierce and evil men will be the gainer however large might be the sum which he received and will anyone say that he is not a miserable captive will remorselessly sell him own divine being to that which which is to that which is most godless and detestable every while took the necklace as the price of her husband's life but is taking bribe in order to compass a wall's win yes said glaucon fast walls i will answer for him has not the intemperate been censored of old because in him the huge multiform monster is uh, is allowed to be too much at large clearly and men are blamed for pride and bad temper when the light a serpent element in them disproportionately goes and gains strength yes and luxury and softness are blamed because they relax and weaken this same creature and make a coward of him yeah, very true, and it's not a man reproach from flatter and meanness who subordinates the spirited animal to the unruly monster, and for the sake of money, of which he can never have enough, habituates him in the days of his youth to be tempered in the mire, and from being a lion to become a monkey. True, he said, and why are mean employments and, ma and manual arts of a, re a reproach? Only because they imply a natural weakness of the higher principle, the individual is unable to control the creatures within him, but has to call them, and his great study is how to flatter them. Such appears to be the reason, and therefore, being desirous of placing him under a rule like that of the best, we say that he ought to be the, ser the servant to the best, in whom the divine rules, not as Tassima who suppose, to the injury of the servant, but because everyone had better be ruled by the divine by divine wisdom dwelling within him, or if this be impossible, then by an external authority, in order that we may be all as far as possible under the same government, friends and equals.
true, he said, and this is clearly seen to be the intention of the law, which the lie of the whole city, and is seen also in the authority, which we exercise over children, and the refusal to let them be free, until we have established in them a principle analogous to the constitution of a state, but by, a, by cultivation of this higher element, have set up in their hearts a guardian and ruler like our own, and when this is done, they may go their ways. Yes, he said, the purpose of law is manifest. From what point of view then and on, and on what goal can we say that a man is profited by injustice or intemperance or other baseness, which will make him a workman, even though he acquire money and or power by his weakness, from no point of view at all? But shall he profit if, if he injustice be undetected and punished? He who is undetected only get works, whereas he who is detected and punished has the brutal part of his nature, silence and humanness. The gentle, the, the gentle element in him is liberated, and his whole soul is perfected and noble by the acquirement of justice and temperance and wisdom, more than the body ever is by receiving gifts receiving gifts of beauty, strength, and health in proportion as the soul is more honorable than the body. Certainly, he said, to this nobler, part, this nobler purpose, the man of understanding will defeat the energies of his life, and in the first life, and in the first place, will honor studies which impress these qualities on his soul and will disregard, disregard others. Clearly, he said, in the next place, he will regulate his bodily habit and training, and so far will he be from yielding to both and rational precepts that he will regard even health as a quite a secondary matter. His first object will be not that will be not that he may be fair or strong or well unless he is like thereby to gain temperance, but he will always desire so to attemper the body as to preserve the harmony of the soul. Certainly he will, he, if he has to be in him. And in the acquisition of wealth, there is a principle of order and harmony, which he will also and he will also observe. He will not allow him he will not allow himself to be dazzled by the foolish applause of the world and heap up riches to his own infinite harm. Certainly not, he said. He will look at the city which is within him, and take it that the only saw the organ in him. Such a might arise either from superfluity or from want, and upon this principle he will regulate his poverty in gain or spend according to his means. Very true. And for the same reason, he will gladly accept and enjoy such honors, as he deems likely to make him a better man, but those whether private or public, which are likely to disorder his life, he will avoid. Then, if that if then if that is if that is his then if that is his motive, he will not be a statesman, but the dog of Egypt. He will in the in the city which is his own certainly will, though in the land of his birth perhaps not, unless he have. A divine call. I understand you mean that he will be a ruler in the city of which we are the founders and which exists in the idea in area only. For I do not believe that there is such an one anywhere on earth. In heaven, I replied, there is light up a pattern of it near things which he who desires may hold, may behold, and may holding may set his own house in order. But whether such an one exists, or ever will exist, in fact, is no matter, for he will live after the manner of that city, having nothing to do with any other. I think so, he said.